healthy discussion about voodoo and about Haiti, but more about voodoo than Haiti. Um, and when we say voodoo in Haiti, that simply means traditional African spiritual system or an indigenous African spiritual system. The indigenous African spiritual system, which is common to all of the continent, is called voodoo in Haiti as the manifestation. Um, in other parts of Africa, it's called other things, but what we're talking about is the traditional or indigenous African spiritual system that forms the African world view. And that is what's under attack. One of the last conversations I had with Dr. Asa Hilliard, he told me to teach our people that we are in a cultural war and that if we don't win the culture war, we will not win the political and economic war, no matter how many battles we win on the political and economic front. If you do not win the culture war, you will lose the whole battle. The cultural battle, you will lose the whole war. And so what we see in Haiti over the last, really, 300 years is an attack on the African psyche an attack on the African worldview, an attack on the African cosmogony by attacking the African spiritual system which is at the center of African culture. And the word voodoo comes from the Fon language. Many of the people in Haiti come from the Fon nation. These are the people primarily of the area we now call Benin. Um, in Benin, the word, one of the word for God is voodoo. In this neighboring country, Togo, where the Ewe people, a cousin people to the Fon people live, their word for God, one of their word for gods, is voodoo. Matter of fact, in Togo, when you want to say the nature of God in man, you say voodoo daha, meaning the God in me. You know, If you want to call on God Almighty, the Fon people, as well as the Haitian people, use the word Lisa. In Togo, the neighboring country, they use the word Sogbe Lisa, which means God is every and all things at once. That God exists alone, and everything else that exists is an expression of an aspect of the divine essence. And that is the nature of Voodoo. What Voodoo says is that everything that exists is an aspect of God. And thus, the essence of God is in all things, plants, animals, earth, water, humans. Mm -hmm. And because the divine essence is in all things, then we should treat all things as though they are an expression or representative of the divine essence. And so, in the structure of voodoo, you know, we Voodoo called them Loas. I'm an Orisha priest, a priest of Oya, uh, from the Yoruba perspective, which is the same system as the Haiti system. And each, and the Yorubas call them Orisha. The Haitians call them Loas. But what we're talking about is the forces of nature mm -hmm. that we know about and that we recognize. Africans and the Voodoo system and the Orisha system have been able to discern in nature over 240 primary forces and another <clears throat> 500 to probably a thousand sub-forces that are elements of one of these 240 primary forces. And what I'm talking about when I say forces, we are talking about, if you're talking about a plant, and any uh, it pick a specific plant. We know that in any specific plant, there is pharmaceutical um, elements that would allow you to use that plant to help assist in the healing of the human body or the replenishing of the human body. So that element of that plant that will assist in the healing. Uh, or the replenishing of the human body is called a force or an orisha mm -hmm. or, or, or power of God in this living thing. And the same thing with animals. In all animals, 
the animal contains the essence of the divine. And so when you do a sacrifice and you um, kill an animal, the vital energy that was that animal is released. And the African tradition says that you can capture that vital energy and use it for good. Everybody talks about voodoo as being something that could be used for bad. Well, if that's the case, why haven't we defeated the Europeans with it? If we've got this power to do harm and destructive things, why haven't we used this power to destroy the imperialists, to destroy the colonialists, to destroy the oppressors, to destroy those who practice genocide against us? That's not what voodoo is about. Voodoo is about understanding nature, your relationship to nature, nature's relationship to you and to be able to discern your interdependence on nature and nature interdependence on you, the human family. And that system of organizing, which goes back as far as the first African, it actually goes back to God, the divine itself. Because in the beginning, you know, in our system, ancestry plays a great role. And in Haiti, you, if you go to any home, even those who say they're Catholic, almost every home in Haiti, whether they proclaim Christianity or not, have shrines to their ancestors. And ancestors is not a big deal. When you tell someone in modern society that you are going to take their DNA, what you're telling them is that I'm going to examine who your ancestors are. Your DNA is your traces of your ancestors. So when someone takes your DNA, they're looking to see what are the trace elements of your ancestors that still remain in your genes and what ancestors still remain in your genes. And so the ancestors are not dead and gone. The ancestors are actually embedded in us, in our DNA, embedded in every cell and every gene in our body. You know, there's an African way of saying it, that we are the best collections of our ancestral genes, of the most powerful genes of our ancestors. Thus, we are the latest model and the highest tech version of those ancestors. And when we pass these genes on to our children, we not only pass ourselves on, we pass all the ancestors that came before us in that line on. So the ancestors isn't something in the past. The ancestors is embedded in the DNA of your body, the genes, the molecules, the electrons and the protons that are in you are the experiences and the result of those experiences that all your ancestors have had since the divine God itself. Because God is the first ancestor. Out of God came the essence and element that made the first human. And out of and in us are the elements that came from the divine into the first human that has been passed down to us. That is the essence of voodoo. Mm -hmm. It is the sacred science of African indigenous spiritual system. And that is under attack by the Christian world, primarily, to some degree by the Muslim world, but particularly by the Christian world, because if the African spiritual system and the African indigenous theology begins to govern African social construction, then you will not be able to oppress African peoples. And so what we are seeing is an attack on the culture of African people because it is understood by our enemies that by attacking our culture, we will attack our, the spiritual center and we will attack those people's ability to protect themselves against genocide. I think it is um, Sister um, um, Marimba Ani that says culture protects the people against genocide. And the way culture protects you against genocide, culture is the educational system of a people that instructs and informs the people of the best of the wisdom of their ancestors that can be used to construct the family, to construct the extended family, to construct the neighborhood, to construct the community, and to construct the nation. 
based on principles, concepts, and ideas that have been proven to be um, sustainable and that is, that is capable of, of, of allowing a society to structure itself around truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, and reciprocity as our ancestors stayed in the term we call ma'at. And so when you're talking about voodoo, you're talking about the way of God as understood by the Africans and have passed down through the centuries. The rituals are nothing but ways of teaching that way of life. Rituals and ceremonies are the university for the value system of a people. Do you understand? And, and a people must be able to teach the concepts, ideas, and principles and embed them in the very psyche of the society. And the way that is taught is through ceremonies, through rituals, through, through celebrations, through, through festivals. And those festivals, rituals, and ceremonies is coordinated based on the cycles of nature. Mm. You understand? And, and, and so when we talk about voodoo, they try to reduce voodoo to European witchcraft. Voodoo is not European witchcraft. Voodoo is the oldest sacred science on the planet. Out of voodoo came Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. They all are elements from fragments from the periphery of the voodoo system or the African indigenous spiritual system. So when I describe the three major religions of the West, we're talking about innovations on aspects of fragments from the periphery of African sacred science. And yet they've organized themselves, those three religions, over the last 2,000 to 3,000 years to plunder the earth in the name of their notion of the divine, to murder and commit genocide against hundreds of millions of people, to usurp and steal the resources and raw materials of the land these people live in. And part of their genocidal process is to demonize the people that they're practicing genocide against so they can rationalize their genocide that's carried out for the purpose of stealing the raw material and resources of those African peoples. And so what have sustained us and what have sustained Haiti is the remnants and elements of voodoo that remain in our daily culture and in our habits. It is embedded in the very language of the Haitian people. The Haitian people do not speak French, you know. They speak an African language. They may call it Creole or Patois, but you're talking about speaking an African language using a French vocabulary. Mm -hmm. But the grammar construction of the Haitian language is fundamentally African. And many of the words are African. They have a small amount of Native American vocabulary, but the, the dominant vocabulary are uh, uh, African using some French vocabulary. But the grammar structure is solely African. And your grammar structure is how messages are translated through sound and vibration, which we call language, into the human mind. And the very vibration of a or sound stimulates aspects of the brain as well as other cells in the human body and carry messages beyond just the mundane definition of the word. You understand? Because we're talking about rhythm. We're talking about vibrations, you know. And so we need to back up and study our ancestors and study our history. There has been no friendly relationship of Christianity to Haiti. Christianity came into Haiti as a murderer. It has sustained its relationship in Haiti as a murderer, an oppressor, and, 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 and a usurper of the resources of Haiti. Haiti's got gold. Haiti's got diamonds. Why isn't the gold and diamond of, of Haiti being used to help the Haitian people? Why is it ending up in Canada, France, and North America? 
Haiti's got good land, and Haiti's land, the, the American agricultural conglomerates are using the Haitian farmland to feed America, but not the people of Haiti. As a sweatshop for cheap American um, textile products and other products without the Haitian people profiting from it. Haiti is located in a place where tourism could be turned into a mega industry if someone wanted to develop the beaches and the shores of Haiti, which they have a lot of, so that Haiti can become as big a tourist center as Brazil or as, as Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico. But it has not been in the interest of the European American, Canadian, and the French because they have been acting towards Haiti with vengeance because of the Haitian Revolution, led by not just Toussaint L'Overture. Toussaint was one of the leaders. Bookman was another leader. Um, Dessalines was a leader. Um, Christophe was a leader. And, and, and um, Defile, um, the priestess, who was probably the most significant of the leaders, she was the voodoo priestess that was the very soul of the Haitian Revolution that gave the impetus and the strength to, to, to um, Dessalines and, and Toussaint and the others. Um, the man who initiated the revolution uh, was Bookman Dutty. And he initiated that revolution with the prayer that we will get rid of the gods of the white man and that we will call upon the gods of our fathers. We will call upon Ogun. We will call upon Oya. We will call upon Yemoya. We will call upon Olokun. We will call upon Oshun. We will call upon Oshosi. We will call upon Shango. Those are the forces in nature that also exist in the body man that you can discern the principles from and use to organize yourself as both a military structure and a civil social structure. And they use that wisdom that they gain from an understanding of these forces and power elements which others call angels or prophets and they use those principles to organize themselves to defeat the mightiest army on earth at that time. An army that was defeating all armies in Europe when it came up against not just the black people of Haiti, when it came up against the black people of Haiti being organized around the principles of Vudun, that mighty army was crushed to the earth. What mighty army? The mighty army of French under the leadership of Napoleon Bonaparte. That was the mightiest army on earth at the time it had crushed Europe. But when it ran into Vudun, it lost. Mm -hmm. It lost. What happened was the betrayal of the revolution. You know, after the revolution, after the first phase of the revolution, in the first phase of the Haitian Revolution, where Toussaint was the leader, there were many white Frenchmen and other white settlers in Haiti who fought on the sides of the blacks. What the white slave owners and landowners wanted to do was to be free from France, to run their plantations and handle their slaves at will. But once they had to free the slaves to help fight that, the enslaved Africans said, we're not going back into the plantation. But even Toussaint agreed after that first phase of the revolution that the, the Africans should go back to the plantation. Mm -hmm. And there was a resistance to that. And when Toussaint was captured by the French, when he went on the French board to sign the peace treaty and transported to Europe and put in a prison in Bavaria, where he ended up dying from starvation, Dessalines, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, who do not get the credit he deserved. Toussaint was an African mulatto. Jean-Jacques Dessalines was a thoroughbred African. Toussaint, who grew up in the urban setting as a house Negro, was a very strong soldier and great leader. But Dessalines was a field Negro, as Malcolm would put the analogy. And Dessalines then took over the revolution with his sidekick, Christophe. And they defeated the mightiest of the French army. That's when the force of France was sent against them. And they crushed them to the earth with voodoo as the primary organizing instrument and the primary spiritual motivation. But after Dessalines had won the battle, 
and Dessalim created his flag for Haiti, which is not the flag that's being used in Haiti today. Dessalim was assassinated by the mulatto general who made up the Christian elite. Even today, that mulatto Christian elite is more responsible for what has happened in Haiti than even the European oppressors from the outside. And we keep letting them get away. So after assassinating Dessalim, they chopped his body up into 13 pieces and buried them in different places. But his wife, Defile, they, she got the women together and they found all the pieces and they sewed Dessalim's body back together and buried it appropriately. But those same mulatto generals, led by the bishop of the Catholic Church, went and dug the body up again and cut Dessalim's head off and took it. And they tell us about voodoo, about witchcraft. You know? Mm -hmm. And so the Haitian Revolution was sabotaged from the beginning by those who believed in the European religious way of life and partnered with those Europeans against the Africans who believed in the African spiritual indigenous way of life, which we now call Vudun, that had won the revolution to free them. But even after defeating the French, that army had to go on and defeat the British mm -hmm. and then defeat the Spanish who came in to help the French. No army in the history of the world under any similar conditions have had the success that Haiti had against the greatest powers in the world, Spain, Britain, and France, and came out victorious because they were organized around the elements of voodoo daha, the nature of God within man, and used that organizational cycle and system to structure their society, from their military society right down to their agricultural society. And so from day one, the, led by the Catholic Church and the Protestant children, they have had Haiti under attack, trying to destroy the essence of the African indigenous spiritual system because if the rest of the African world truly understand what happened in Haiti and begin to adopt and return to the spiritual essence of their ancestors and looking towards our indigenous culture to organize ourselves, we'll all be able to free ourselves of European spiritual domination, cultural domination, and psychological domination. And once you can do that, it becomes easy to free yourself of their economic domination and their political domination. Mm -hmm. So when we think of voodoo, voodoo is a, is a way of life. It is a way of life that is wrapped in a culture. It is a way of life with a spiritual core that goes back to the divine itself at the very beginning of human time. It is a way of life that everybody else have a fragment of and use to organize their theologies around the world, while at the same time denying the parent people that gave them the very foundation for their theology. I'm talking about everything from Buddhism to Islam, from Christianity to Judaism. All of them are nothing more than representatives of fragments from the periphery, innovations on fragments from the periphery of the African spiritual system, which we call voodoo. And anybody that thinks they want to have a problem with that or challenge me with that, I will debate anybody. I will sit with anybody. I will whatever with anybody to let them know and understand that there is no way you can talk about a voodoo without talking about the way of life of man in its purest form that is the first manifestation of man's interpretation on earth to represent the divine blueprint of the creator itself by recognizing <clears throat> the essence of the Creator in all things and respecting that divine essence that manifests in all things. Is there a similarity, uh, is there an aspect of voodoo, God, 
which also was um, a part of the Egyptian spiritual system. The Egyptian system, system is the, can be called the Buddhist system. It's the same system. The, the Haitians call the elements of the divine that they recognize loas. The Egyptians call those elements of the divine neches. They're talking about the same thing. The neches or the necheru of Egypt is the same loas of Haiti and the same Orisha of Nigeria. They're all talking about the manifestation of aspect of the divine power and essence in all other living things. And when you think of voodoo, voodoo is not a religion. It is not a theocracy. It is a total way of life that involves the medicine, that involves the spiritual, that involves the pharmacology, that involves the psychology, that involves the sociology. All of these things are interrelated into one system that we call voodoo. And it has many different elements and many different levels of priesthood that do the many different functions. A priest is nothing more than a scientist who's a practitioner and who's a specialist in one area or another. Today in the West, what they're calling scientists is what we once called priests back in the early days. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you may have, uh, there's an element of voodoo that deals with, with surgery. There's an element that deals with pharmacology. There's an element that deals with psychology. I'll just give you a, a sense of understanding. There's three major reaches that everybody in the West know about. They know about Shango. They know about Oya. They know about Ogun. Mm -hmm. And so they'll say, oh, Ogun is the god of war, the god of iron. And Oya is the goddess of wind. And Shango is the god of lightning and thunder. But those are anthropomorphic symbols with metaphoric labels. If you look at the essence of what they were to symbolize in the human spirit and in nature itself, Shango in the human spirit symbolizes the courage within a human being that recognizes the need for higher spiritual growth. And once that is realized, that you have the courage, which the, they looked at a king as being the most courageous in society, so the courage to change yourself spiritually requires great, great courage. And so Shango is to symbolize the courage within any human being to change themselves to a higher spiritual self. But to do that, once you realize the need for change, you got to do something. You've got to marry change in process. Oya, the female symbol, which represents the wind, which is a symbol of metaphoric change, then marries Shango. So now the need for change has married the process of change. Mm -hmm. But the need for change is not married the process of change. The process, the cycle is not complete. So now change, the woman, must take a second husband, which the West called polyandry, but there was no woman actually doing this. This is a metaphor. The second husband becomes Ogun. Ogun, the god of iron, the god of war, represents transformation. Well, transformation follows change. Mm -hmm. You understand? So when you're talking about the story of Shango and the story of Oya and Ogun, you're talking about the courage to realize the need for change. You're talking about change in the, the transformation that comes as a result of the change. Mm -hmm. And so that's voodoo. That's, if you want to call it out, theocracy. Theology, that's part of our theology. There's another concept in the voodoo system. It's called awu. And in, in awu, this concept awu has to do with, it, it means like you come and you go. It has to do with what um, the West tends to call um, reincarnation. But in the African system, Reincarnation is not like the Asian system. In the Asian system, you can die and come back as a bumblebee or a fly or, or an animal. But the African system, you can only come back as a human being. And you can only come back in the gene pool and bloodline out of which you left. 
So you come back in your family, which is in all of our tradition. You know, you from the South, South Carolina, like me, we grew up in the Geechee Gullah culture, which is a voodoo culture for us over here. We call it hoodoo or root, but it's the same African system. And anytime a baby is born, those elders get together to decide what? Who done, who done come back? Mm -hmm. Who does? Who does boy be? Who does gal be? Who done come back now? or this is so-and-so ancestor, this is so-and-so. That is embedded in the African traditional system. So in the, the system of Vudun, it says you get a chance to come and to go into this world and out of this world to perfect yourself so you can then integrate back with the divine and become one with the divine again, what the West call heaven. Each of those eight coming and going cycles, you have 12 steps of perfection to fulfill in terms of ethical, moral, principle growth in your character. Mm -hmm. And once you've completed the eighth and you've perfected it, then you go back to become one with God again and a part of the divine essence expressing yourself on all of the other aspects of the divine essence. That's our theology. That's voodoo. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's why the West is afraid of it, because if that system is practiced, this system of genocide that's called Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and those who want to get angry because I say that, look at the history. Africa did not invade your land. You've invaded our land from day one, murdering our people, raping our women, stealing our resources, and for centuries you still occupy our land and call it yours. You still impose your way of life on mine. You still tried to destroy mine and peripheralize it and tried to make it and to demonize it. And in doing so, you end up committing genocide psychologically, spiritually, culturally, and then physically against my African peoples. Voodoo is the saving grace of the African world. And until we return to the indigenous African spiritual system and win the culture war against the European and his bastardized mulatto children, we will not be free to live on this earth in truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, and balance as our ancestors prescribe and set up a system to allow us to do. So when we think of voodoo, think of the God within, the God in me. That's all voodoo means. It means the God in me. Okay. So now, I want to come back to this in a minute, but mm -hmm. I want to, something is terribly disturbing when you see how our, how our children after the earthquake in Haiti, and I'm not sure that the earthquake was not man-made, but thousands and thousands and thousands of African children, Haitian children, are being distributed to white folk around the world. What is that and about? That, that was going on before the earthquake. The earthquake simply pulled the cover off of it. You had 54,000 Americans in Haiti. What were they doing there? What was 54,000 white Americans doing in Haiti? We would not even know they were there had this earthquake not come. Mm -hmm. They were mostly running orphans in school, stealing African children, bringing them to raise in the West, because those are the people who they will put in the leadership position over black folks, both here and in Haiti. They're hedging their bet on their future. They got black bodies with white souls mm -hmm. and white value systems and white belief system so that the whites won't have to push their system because the black people will perpetuate that system for them. We are not the bodies we are in, we are what we believe. And so if you can put your belief and your values in another body that's healthy enough to live even when you're gone, then you live on because that's who you are. You are those beliefs. You are that value. But this thing of stealing Haitian children had been going on. They're not only doing it in Haiti, they were doing it in the Philippines. You remember the, the, the Chad government two years ago stopped a plane load with hundreds of black children from Chad being smuggled out to France. This is going on all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it just became one of those things that was uncovered by this, um, this um, earthquake. And like you said, the earthquake could be man-made. They have the capability to cause an earthquake, but let's assume it's natural. Um, 
it is, it is a very destructive and a very terrible thing our people are going through. And we have to do everything we can to help them with the material needs and the reconstruction of a society along the lines that is appropriate for them. That's where the real question is going to come in. When the reconstruction of Haiti begins, what Haiti will be constructed? Will it be Haiti constructed or America, France, and Canada constructed in terms of the social construction, the political construction, the economic construction of the society? Um, what we see going on in Haiti, I watch the television news, and every network is trying to look for something negative. Yet the dignity with which these people have handled themselves under the duress that they're under has been extraordinary. Seven days with barely no water, no food, but you're still trying to conduct yourself with dignity in order to receive this stuff. They're looking for riots and they're looking for this, uh, any little group of kids. Now, if you've been five days without food and you find a store with some food and you go and get it, why is that called rioting? But that's the kind of the white Christian mindset is fundamentally anti-African. And it has never changed from the days of enslavement of Africans by them. They still are the same people. And so we have to wake up. And the only way to wake up is to turn back to the instructions of our ancestors and to begin to adapt and adopt to the ways of our ancestors because our very DNA is programmed to those ways. And so when we assume another people's ways, we are actually in violation of our very DNA. We are causing conflict and confusion in our very DNA because our DNA was constructed and formed by our ancient people. And the few hundred years it's been tampered with cannot equal the millions of years that it was constructed to be what it is. Let me ask you a deeply spiritual question. Uh, African worldview is that the living, the dead, and the yet unborn all share the same space. Mm -hmm. The Haitian Revolution was um, uh, brought about by some of the most committed, bravest souls. Now, mm -hmm. uh, it had already happened, a tragedy has happened there. Hundreds, maybe a couple hundred thousand people, maybe more, we don't know, mm -hmm. who have lost uh, their lives. But they mm -hmm. are transformed because death is mm -hmm. not what we right. uh, believe death to be in the West. So what does that say to you, the living, the dead, the yet unborn, all share the same space? What, 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 what values can we draw in this, in this time of, of tragedy? to understand this process and what it can mean because these are the children of those who brought about. Unless we return to the way of the ancestors, what was the ancestors doing when they were so victorious? Now, if you want to study a ball team that won the championship, you look to see what plays they were using and what strategies they were using at the time they won that championship. And if we want to understand how Haiti can restore itself and how the African world outside of Haiti can learn from that restoration, then we must go back and say, okay, what was it that the people were doing under the leadership of Bookman, Dessaline, Toussaint, Defile, and Christophe? that allow them to be so successful. And when they stopped doing that, they lost their success edge. The degree to which we moved away from voodoo is the degree to which we have suffered over the last few hundred years in Haiti. The degree to which we abandon the way of our mothers and fathers who were victorious against the most evil military force on the planet the degree to which we backed away from the tools and the belief they used that brought them that victory is the degree to which we have sunk back into the oppression that they fought against. Dessaline said when the victory was won 
that he did not want the smell of the stench of the French language in Haiti. What is the French language doing there? He did not want the Catholic Church in Haiti. What is it doing there? Because we turned away from the victors, from our victorious ancestors, and we went back to the way of the enslavers of our ancestors. And so the consequences of abandoning your primal essence to return to the way of the, the essence of those who practice genocide against you then puts you in position to be partnership, to be in partnership with your own genocide. That's not just true for Haiti. That's true here in North America, and that's true on the continent of Africa. And until we abandon the way and the practices of our oppressors and those who practice genocide against us, and return to the way of our ancestors, those who love and wanted to preserve us, we will be victims of our own genocide that we carry out using the belief system, the practices, and the way of life of our enemies and the enemies of our ancestors. That's the simplest way to put it because it ain't really nothing complicated about this. You know, there's a fear. Fear has been used to make our people walk away from themselves. Malcolm X said the secret to life is to have no fear because every human body we know will recycle back in nature just as it came out of nature. But every human body that we know, when they've deposited their seed in their children and their grandchildren, is eternal. Okay? And even those who you didn't deposit into biologically, if you deposit your seed into them intellectually, spiritually, and culturally, you are still eternal. Okay? I think, you know, I'll take one more question. Well, because I got things, uh, I got to go. Professor Small, I, I, I think it is so important that we look at uh, the connection between ancient Kemet, uh, Egypt, as it has um, come down and it is expressed uh, very well in the uh, Haitian um, culture. And that's what I wanted to focus a little more on. Can you? Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that big to, to make Egypt is not our genesis. Egypt itself is a child of Africa. Egypt is not our genesis. It is just one of those places because of the ecology where so much has been preserved, because of the dryness of the desert, because of the access to stone to build, we preserve so much of the works our ancestors did. And remember the work to build a building. It isn't the building that is important. It is the principle upon which the building was constructed. It is the science and knowledge used to construct that edifice. That same science that you use to construct the edifice is the same science you use to construct the human character. Mm -hmm. And so Egypt becomes a very good example. But there's a book coming out in two months called Black Genesis. It's based on the study of a place called Naptoplio, which is in the south um, west corner of Egypt, where there's an archaeological find in caves with paintings of African men and women. That's three to four, maybe 5,000 years before the first dynasty in Egypt. But they've got already all of the, the religious system and all of the pharaonic elements of Egypt. Mm -hmm. There is more. The American satellites from above have taken photographs of two rivers running from the Atlantic to the Nile in ancient times. That changed the whole discussion of Egypt because the very people that peopled Egypt came from the south and the west to begin with. Mm -hmm. okay? And when they're driven out by the invaders, they take the culture that they, the unified culture that they had created back and fused it with the ancient culture of the south and the west and the central parts of Africa. So the culture of Egypt is simply a glaring manifestation of the unification of African indigenous culture and spiritual system. So in that sense, Egypt becomes very important, but it isn't the genesis of anything African. It isn't even the highest level of African civilization. We confuse materiality with high. 
because we live in the West and we see all the beautiful building and so that makes it a high civilization. No, the, the, the Twa people who the West called pygmies living in the jungles or the rainforests of Congo who have no buildings may be living at the highest level of African civilization because of their integration and interrelationship with the rest of nature. But they're, they're, we don't have the physical, tangible things to look at to really understand their society. So we can look at Egypt where they left the tangible things, the buildings and the roads and the temples and the paintings, and we learn so much from that because the way we learn, that made it easy for us. Egypt simply represent a zenith in African civilization when we look at the unity of the different elements of the African civilizing process. But that process had been millions of years in formation all over Africa prior to them building that civilization along the Nile. A lot of what would leave the Nile when the invasions of the Hyksos and the the Greeks and the Romans and the Arabs would come and drive the people out into Sudan and into Chad and into Uganda and over to West Africa, then a lot of those elements that was developed in the Nile Valley would now be reintegrated in the indigenous communities in other parts of Africa. And so when we see voodoo, uh, one may be tempted to say structurally it came from Egypt. I say structurally Egypt got it from them.